Hello and welcome to this video series on Godot. We're gonna be looking at a core add-on library that I've created and released as a plugin. My name is Samuel Asher Ravello. I have over 20 years of game dev experience. The last decade or so focused mostly in the Unity game engine, but I love exploring other engines like Godot, and we're gonna be taking a look at that today. My mission is to educate and entertain with interactive gaming technology, and I've shipped titles for all sorts of different platforms, particularly with Unity. In addition to doing development and shipping these commercial titles, I've also done lots of teaching in the space, online and in person at universities, as well as releasing on-demand courses. Now those courses focus in the Unity game editor for 2D and 3D stuff. You can see some of them here, and I will link below to those courses if you're interested to learn more about Unity. While we're talking about Godot here, a lot of the principles carry directly over to Godot, particularly these architecture courses that I've got and unit testing courses. Uh, I will be talking about those in this series, particularly how to use my MVCS framework, which I now have ported over to the Godot engine, as well as doing unit testing. In fact, in this video, we're gonna take a little bit of a look at unit testing in Godot, and I'll explore that later in this series as well. So let's dive into talking about Godot. Now, as I'm learning and offering more things about Godot and resources to the community, I'll have everything updated at this link. So you can go to this Godot portfolio and see articles, repos like the one we're gonna look at today, as well as different tips and all the videos on the subject. So if you wanted to keep track of one URL and see that it gets updated regularly, check this one out. Now, one of those courses that I mentioned, again, Unity focused, is Unit Testing for Unity. This course is 90% relevant to Godot, while in those use cases I'm showing Unity's tooling for CI, CD, and unit testing, you want to be able to explore all these different topics in Godot as well. Now, maybe someday I'll do an update to this course to offer Godot as well, but I want to reiterate that it is useful and we'd be able to get a lot of the fundamentals, looking at unit testing workshops, the different lessons you would want to have, being able to have your unit tests running inside your development environment. And we begin with why unit tests are interesting, why they're so helpful for us in software development, particularly in game development. In fact, I've done a whole best practices series where I lean heavily on that, and I'll link to that below. So we're gonna look at unit testing again in this video inside Godot. I just wanted to mention this as a little bit of the background information. The course has done very well, again, particularly with the C-sharp audience. So if you're looking to do C-sharp inside Godot, it's really relevant that you take a look at this. It's a way to fantastically add to the confidence you have and the scalability in your projects. So here we are at the GitHub repo for the core library that I'm going to talk about today. This is freely available and you can grab it at this URL. I'll put the link below. In many of my different platforms that I work within, I blow out this core library and I put lots of different useful classes. I did it kind of early in my Godot development because I wanted to offer some more functionality on top that we'll explore in the subsequent videos. We'll be looking at creating a singleton alternative that is native for Godot, as well as a mini MVCS framework that is native for Godot. Now those two add-ons needed some shared code, so it makes sense to have both of those depend on this one here. Now as I'm learning Godot, when I compare it to Unity, one of the disappointing lacks in Godot in their community right now is the ability to offer community-based plugins, which are also called add-ons, but they refer to the same thing, community-based plugins that have dependencies. Unity has dependency management. It's not perfect, but it's built in through their Unity package manager system. In Godot, there is an asset lib, which is the place that you would find some of these um, assets, and a pretty nice workflow for adding any one of them and having them be able to turn on and off. However, if you want your add-on to depend on another add-on, I don't yet know if there's a good workflow for that. So what I've chosen to do here is this RMC core is an add-on that you would copy and paste into your own project. So here in the getting started of this repo and my other repos, I list out how you can get everything set up. Notice in step seven here is installing any dependencies. Now this core library is meant to be the dependency of other libraries, so it doesn't have any required dependencies. If you were going to go grab one of my other libraries that I'll talk about in the future, you may need to install this core one first. So that's kind of how the structure is meant. 
There is an optional dependency. If you want to, you can add this library here for GD Unit 4, and that will unlock the ability to do unit testing in your projects and also see the unit tests inside my libraries. Unit tests, again, are a great way to prove out that your functionality is working the way that you intend and to help create larger projects with more confidence and scalability. We'll take a look at one of those running tests here inside this in a minute. So here I am in a custom project I've created local on my machine. And what I've done is added the add-ons folder, brought in that GD4 unit, and then brought in the RMC core library itself. So that was downloading those two libraries and just dragging in the add-ons from each of them. Now that you've got all that in there, you go to the project window, just like I've described there in the readme, and you go to the plugins folder and then you enable these plugins. So I'll enable the GD4 and I'll enable the RMC core. And now we're ready and set up for development. I will also be building on top of these two with even more functionality in other repos. So let's see what's offered in each of them. Um, I'm really focusing on the core library here. So let's see. In the core library, I do have the library itself, which is the library's core functionality. And then I have some optional examples on top of that. So you could step through the examples. I don't necessarily create an example for everything in the library, but where it makes sense, I, I do that. And that workflow will be built out I have, I don't know how many classes in the library now, but I could imagine having 30, 50, 100 different ones because I've built similar types of core libraries before for other platforms. Um, inside one of the examples, let's just take a look. So here is the uh, logger system. So the logger system is an easy way to do logging out to the console. Godot offers you a way to do things like that within uh, GDScript or C Sharp, slightly different. But if you want to have a little bit more logging power, I've got a custom logging library. Now, I'm not here to say that this logging library is the one to rule them all, but as I was developing my own features, it was really useful for me to have a solution. So I've offered mine here. So just taking a look at, here's a little bit of documentation about the logger. Here's a scene to run with the logger. So I'm going to right click that, make sure it's our default scene, which it is. And then I'm going to go up here and play. And let's see what it does. So this particular tool, because it's not so interesting, it doesn't do anything at runtime. It just spits out some logging text here. And let's open up and look at the source file for that. So here is the script for the example for the logging library. So you can pop right in here. If you're interested in that particular feature of the library, you can see at least the snippet here that you could copy and paste. So again, this live logging is meant to be used to be able to turn on and off logging on a per class basis, instead of just having a bunch of console log statements thrown through your project with the ability to turn them off, not really there for you. Here you can easily just turn all logging off by in this case from, from false to true or from true to false. As this RMC core library gets built out even more, we would offer more library functionality and examples on top of that. The second thing that I wanna show is about GD unit. So when we hit install in GD unit, what it does is it adds this window up here and it will show all the different tests that are available in your project. Now, if you have no tests in your project, you would see nothing showing up here, just like we see. But I'm gonna go ahead and build the project. Everything's good. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here in this window. And what it does is looks through our file system, looks for every compatible test that's there, and then it runs the testing on them. So we've got tests here running on our templates, on our events, on our observables, and on our utilities. So I offer unit testing coverage, is what this is called, on the uh, different things that I've got inside that core library. And in my future add-ons, I'll follow the same paradigm. Now, there's two reasons that I have these unit tests in there. One is that I follow test-driven development, which means I find it useful to have tests available as I'm laying down a feature for the first time. And then a second reason is those tests sit around to demonstrate, hey, this is how the code is being used, and this is how 
that is pro hopefully successful, how the code is successfully run. You can also down here, hit this GD unit console and be able to see all the names of the tests that are run and here's some individual methods. So I'm gonna have a separate video where I talk about unit testing in Godot and we'll be able to look at the source code there. But let me just show one particular inside the scripts. I've got a runtime folder which has our runtime functionality. If I had edit time code for tooling and stuff like that, I may put a sibling folder called editor, but I don't have that yet. And then down here inside the tests, I've got a similar folder structure where I have the actual tests themselves. So let's just see what one particular test file looks like. So the reason that the GD unit add-on is able to find these is because there's some specific attributes that you use. There's test suite, there's before, then there's the actual tests themselves. So here in this video, it's not meant to describe exactly what unit tests are and how they're useful, but let's just take a look at one. So this describes one particular test. Typically a test uses a piece of base library like file access utility in this case, and it calls one particular method on it. It makes some assumptions that, hey, if we call this, there should be some sort of predictability to the result. In this case, we're asserting that the result of is path within resources is going to be true here. We saw in the results beforehand that all of the tests passed, so we know that this one's true. If somewhere along the lifetime of my development, I accidentally broke this, it's, I'm gonna be notified because that test is going to fail. It's a fantastic way for bulletproofing uh, your own code, as well as doing, again, that test-driven development that I mentioned. So that's it for this video. Thanks for following along here. We've taken a look at the RMC core library, seen a little bit about how it's structured and how those optional unit tests run. I didn't go too in depth with what's offered in the library. So just look at the readme as it grows. I will be documenting there because it's gonna quickly fall out of date but we did take a look at that logger as one particular example. And we saw for that, that there was an example scene that shows how and why you could use it, as well as unit testing, validating that it does run the way that it is meant to be run. So I can take that as a foundation and build more of my own custom game code, as well as other add-ons on top of it. And you're invited to do the same using my add-ons, my testing practices as well, and bring those into your project for creating your own add-ons. Even if you didn't choose to use some of my assets directly, I hope it is useful as an inspiration, looking at a model of how you might want to approach some of these challenges in your own projects. So thanks.